What's up guys, I'm Sam. And I'm Brad. Welcome to our garage. We're doing a part one of a multi-part go-kart build, and we thought we could take you guys along for the ride. So, check it out. Enjoy. All right, step number one, we got our engine. We're committed now. Let's see what she looks like. Predator 212, Harbor Freight Special. Oh, heck. She's a beauty. Oh, yes. Aha! What do you think? It's a beauty. These Predator 212s are cheap but very functional. Six and a half horsepower of screaming fury. The car is basically done. Dude, guess what? What? It just went zero miles an hour. Sweet. We're burning the place down. Our Parts just came in from Go Power Sports. We have our spindles, steering spindles, our rear axle along with their wheels. We have the axle bearings and the hangers. Over here we have our sprocket, our chain, our brake drum and brake bands, and our miscellaneous axle hardware. There's still more coming. We don't have it all yet, but this is what we have so far. We're getting our parts off of Go Power Sports. Well, most of them chain to come from Go Power Sports, but that's where we got most of them. And the parts are in great condition, great quality. If you're going to attempt a project like this, we would definitely suggest going to Go Power Sports. They have a huge selection, and again, the parts are just great quality. So, alrighty. Now, in order to make a go kart, you got to have some sort of a plan. And we thought, hey, we got all the parts, let's measure them, put them in the computer, we can develop some sort of a drawing. So we got drawings of our spindles and our bearing hangers and the center lines on everything so we know, we took pretty accurate measurements so we know exactly where things line up. And that allowed us to create a... Uh, top view of the frame here, exactly kind of what we're planning on doing. Need to make sure that we leave enough room for the steering geometry to do its thing and for the all the axles and sprockets and everything to have clearance. And we also have, I took a side view of Sam and we enlarged it to full scale along with the parts of the go-kart and the tires and everything. So this is roughly what it's going to look like when we're all done. So we've got dimensions that we pulled off of that and then this is what we're going to use to build our frame. Looks like our feathered friends also are interested in building a go-kart. These parts are for us. Sorry, I don't think they have duck-sized parts here. They might, but not likely. It's obviously not to scale, but this is the plan that we had on our paper to kind of go by to get us started. So this is kind of our plan, but we thought it would be a good idea to have this on a full-scale model. So we're going to draw it on our, whatever this is called? Particle board. Yeah, particle board. And so we're going to make a scale model on the particle board. So we kind of have something to go by when we uh, start making the frame. So we just have a, it's a scale map to kind of be a reference. Shut up, Ricky. I'd just like to introduce you to the garage pencil sharpener. The world's greatest this side of Kansas. Can't beat it. It's an efficient way to sharpen it. Extremely efficient way. Hold it over. The fan is not helping at all. The flies are killing us. If it's anything today, the element of the day is bug spray. 
basic dimensions set out for our go-kart. This is roughly where our engine will be, but we don't know exactly yet because we don't have our torque converter. So this is roughly where it's going to be. We don't know the exact dimensions yet, but this is roughly the basic outlining of what you're going to see. And this is roughly what it will look like with a human. Roughly. And chickens. And chickens. And a couple of ducks. The that we're going to be using to build our go-kart frame is one inch by one and a half inch square tubing. One, because it's nice and rigid, and two, because we already had plenty of it. But unfortunately, it working with it comes with cost. Greasy hands. So just being as that this um, rectangular tubing is just real greasy and came straight out of the steel yard, it still is, we thought we could have a remedy for that by just cleaning it off in a couple minutes with just some acetone. It should work and it's just overall a lot easier to handle. So there's a ton of ways that you can cut metal tubing such as this. And three of the ways that we're going to be doing it are using this horizontal metal band saw, a angle grinder with a cutting wheel on it, and last, some of the smaller cuts we're going to be using our portable band saw. This is our first official cut for our go kart plane. Using our horizontal band saw. And it seems to be working great. And there you have it. Hopefully they're the right size. Yeah, we better make sure. Sounds good. Let's see what we got here. 18 inches right on the nose. Perfect. Awesome. All right. As long as you've got nice, fairly new black steel, a utility knife is a fantastic way to mark it. It gives you a really nice razor sharp line literally razor sharp all right we think the next few pieces we have to cut have to have a 15 degree angle on them and we thought the easiest way to do that was just to make ourselves a wooden template using the miter saw at 15 degrees that we got something really easy to compare to fire away Fortunately, we have garage air conditioning. Nice. We're cutting at a 15 degree angle. Alrighty, we got a couple pieces on the frame here that are have to all kind of come together at weird angles. And since we want both sides of the frame to be exactly the same, we're taking just a couple minutes to make a real quick jig. We cut some pieces of wood that have the right angles and the right distances here and there. So then all we'll have to do is put these in here, lock them down tight, put a couple welds on, instant perfect angles. We have our jig completed. Sanded down a few spaces for welding. Charging up our Hobart welder. And within a few minutes, we should be good to start welding it together. So the advantage of using a jig when you're tacking and welding is that you'll get multiple parts that are perfectly identical to one another. And now that we know that, we can finish welding them out nice and solid. Alrighty, We've, uh, the frame is underway. We've got most of the stuff cut. We've still got a couple more angle cuts to make here. Uh, as a result of some of these angles and how they're working out, we're going to adjust our overall length just a little bit. It's going to be a tiny bit longer than we originally planned, but that won't really affect anything. Uh, so we've still got to cut the top of what will eventually become the seat back and probably another spreader down here somewhere to support the... Uh, steering hoop 
And then we've got to attach the bearing hangers and start working on the steering and stuff. But the frame is getting there. It's getting close. We're going to start doing cuts on our portable bandsaw. Pretty much perfect. <clears throat> so we prepped the back piece, back piece of the frame, so we have it all clamped together. We um, prepped the metal and grounded it, and we tested it for a square, and it should be ready to weld. All right, Sam's gonna get in a few welds. See how it goes. Success? Looks like it. All right, for the top of the seat, uh, instead of just cutting apart a piece that goes in between these uprights, we're going to cut a piece that's the whole length and then we're going to notch out the end so there's a little flap that will cover these holes that will give it a nice clean finished look. Ready. Cover. Let me see. And when Sam's welding this uh, really thin metal, like where you have a really thin corner hanging out, um, he's figured that it, it works a little better to just do little spurts, like stitch welding a bunch of little tacks next to each other. Check this out. Our frame is like mostly completed. We still haven't welded the bottom of it yet, but it's about finished. It's Looks pretty finished. light too. Yeah, it's a lot. It's pretty light, which is good because awesome. we want it to be light. All right, I think we're at a pretty good stopping point. We got the uh, basic structure of the frame is done. It's welded up, Pretty it's strong, it's good to go. Uh, there's a few little details here and there. We've got some gussets and some side supports and various little brackets and doohickeys, but we can finish that up. But I think we're gonna go ahead and call that the end of video number one. Sounds great. Thanks for watching and part two is coming up next, so stay tuned. See ya.